Michelle Garrett, mom extraordinaire, entrepreneur extraordinaire. This particular episode is concerning or regarding busy moms and all they have to handle to keep the family going and the business going and the marriage going because that's a separate entity unto itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Michelle, okay, start with the family. How many kids do you have? How long have you been married and how old are your children? Okay, so my husband and I will be celebrating 10 years of marriage on August 14th of this month. So I'm so excited. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a journey. It's journey. It truly is. We have grown a lot together. <laughs> Uh, between the two of us, we have four children. Uh, our oldest, uh, he, we both had a child coming into the marriage, so he had a daughter and I have a son. There's no step, like we don't, that, that's my daughter. So my daughter, the, my oldest daughter lives in Texas with her mom and family, and she is 15. She'll be 16. Wow, okay. She's about to start her junior year. Not ready. <laughs> She's about to start her junior year, and then my uh, my oldest son will be 15 on Thursday, August 4th, and he's about to start his sophomore year. And then I also have an eight-year-old son and a four-year-old little girl, too. So you've got the generations, the different, I mean, the different generations, like there's no two children that are experiencing the same thing at the same time. Because even though the top two are near the same age, girls, teens are totally different from, <laughs> look at your face, are totally different from boy teens. It has, they, they keep me on my toes. I don't have any gray that I can see yet, so that that's a good thing. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to say the least. You know, I, I learn something from my children every day. Mm -hmm. They all have very distinct personalities very, very distinct personalities. Uh, they, for the most part, all do get along. Of course, you know, children are children when they're around each other too long, they have their moments. But overall, everyone gets along. It's very interesting because my oldest son and my youngest daughter, they're actually the closest. Uh, when he, yes, when he leaves to go uh, to his dad for the summer, he's gone for 10 weeks every summer. And he calls at least once every other week. And he, the first thing he always asks, how's Veronica? Oh, hi, son. Yes, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for calling to check on me. <laughs> and she does the same thing, too. Like she's already started her countdown, so uh, we do a little fun countdown. We get a little bit closer so that she knows he's coming, because uh, she's like, he's never coming home. So wow. So we do a countdown since we're, like, on the, I think we're at, like, two weeks now, so he'll be home. So it, it helps her to kind of be a little bit more conscious of time. But they are very close. My middle son my youngest son he's he's a mama's boy i call him my favorite mm -hmm. i do i tell my children mom my yes. yeah. <laughs> it's a running family joke like all of my yeah. children that there are certain different qualities mm -hmm. like the, you know, i'll be honest he knows he was not he has not been my favorite child <laughs> because <laughs> freshman year teenage years with him has been <laughs> Interesting. So, mm -hmm. but no, I, I, it's, it's a running family joke. So all of my children know, and I make sure that I tell them on a regular basis, you know, what I love about them and their qualities that I admire. Okay, okay. So mom's working, right? Do the top two, well, do the bottom two know mom working outside the house or their entire lives? Okay, so they have been a part of the transition, and that's the one thing about oh. my, the business that I have. Like, they saw me going to work. Uh, my daughter, which my daughter remembers it as well, because she was going to daycare until last year as well. So, um, you know, for the first two and a half, three years, three and a half years of her life, she was in daycare. 
So she remembers mommy getting off work and depending on what my husband's schedule was, I either, you know, brought her home as my oldest son got older, he was able to to watch her a little bit for me as well. So she remembers there were times where I have to get off work, drop her off at home, and then go back to work. Or if mm-hmm. I didn't have to watch her, if my son had something after school and my husband had to work, she'd go back to work with me and we'd be there for a couple of hours where she'd have her tablet and some snacks and we'd be sitting there working. So, you know, my youngest son, he remembers that as well. They all recall the days of mama working outside the house and the number of hours that I had to work. Wow. Weekends, having to go in on the weekends. So they get it. So the transition to me working from mm-hmm. home is special for all of us because they understand that I am now home. I'm, no, I'm more present and available. When my baby, <laughs> when he gets home, you know, once school starts, when he gets home mm-hmm. at 3.30, I shut it down. That's okay. our time. Okay. You know, we're, we're having snacks, we're doing homework, and then from 3.30 till about 8.30, I'm focused on them. I'm not ha- having to leave to go back okay. to work. I'm not having, you know, for the most part, I try not to schedule any type of conference calls or mm-hmm. things during mm-hmm. time. And then once I put them to bed, that's when I'll go ahead and, you know, get caught up in any work that I need to be done. But they all remember the days. My oldest son, bless his heart, you know, he's he remembers everything you know i remember when he was first born you know i worked in the hotel industry and there were holidays i was, mm-hmm. I was a management in the hotel industry so everybody always got sick at christmas mm-hmm. new year's day all of those days so he was coming to work with me you know i was there checking people in with him in the carrier and thankfully i've always had jobs and mm-hmm. uh, bosses that understood that because i was a single mother for so long uh, my husband and I, when we got married, my, my son was five years old when we got married. So they understood that if you want me to be here, someone calls that out, you know, I'm a great employee. But if you're calling me in on my, my day off, I may have to bring my child with me. And, you know, for the most part, it usually worked out. But the transition has been amazing because they see me happier. They see Ooh. me more involved. They see me less stressed, and that's, I think, is the biggest thing that I'm less stressed. But they also are a big part of my business. Walk me through the transition. Mom says, I'm done. I'm tired of this. I'm now going to go home and start my own. A lot of entrepreneurs do not end with the same business that they start with. So are you in the same business that you initially walked out with, or have you made an additional transition? For the most part, yes. Okay, so I started, I I was building my business while I was working my full-time job. So not only was I giving somebody 50 to 60 hours, coming home, being wife and mom, once they went to sleep, I was then getting online and building my business. Yeah. I'm not cut out for it. I'm not cut out for it at all. Single, no children, never been married. I'm not cut. I can barely do the 40, okay? But... (laughs) My motivation was, Woo! I think about when I when I really started making money from my, my side gig. Because really, you know, mm-hmm. my husband, he works, he work, he he has a federal job. So he's not leaving that job, okay? He was in the military. He got out the military. You know, he's got a few more years and he'll be able to retire. So he's not, he's not leaving the, right. that job. He'll be less than 50 years old and be able to hire. And I'm trying to get him to work a little bit longer because both of us in this house at the same time. No, I'm going to do that. He has to go get another job somewhere else. When I had my daughter, we were out looking for, for houses. And I remember it because I had a miscarriage. Okay, so I had a miscarriage before having my daughter. And... I got pregnant again, but because I had shared that with so many people and was so disappointed and, you know, I had to tell people, well, no, I lost this baby. You know, it was a very emotional time for me. So when I found out I was pregnant with her, I didn't tell nobody. I didn't even tell him because there was just this fear that I didn't want him to get excited. I didn't want myself to get excited. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to get to the three month mark. And then that's when I will go ahead and let him know. I didn't even tell my job, like my boss knew because I needed her to know, you know, because I was, I had terrible morning sickness, all that stuff. So I needed her to know, but I told her, I like, I don't want anybody else to know because my job was involved with that. Because, you know, the job that I worked, we were like a little mini family. So 
when I had my miscarriage, it impacted them as well because they were all a part of that. I didn't want that to happen. So we were out looking for houses and he kept looking at I was like, we don't need another bedroom. Like he kept getting excited about this house. I was like, we don't need more space. So I had to pull him over. And I, was like, I really didn't want to tell you this right now. Like, this because they were ready to go put an offer on this house that would not have been big enough for all of us so i was like so yeah i'm pregnant again so we can't have this you know we can't we can't we need a big So let's count all the jobs thus far, shall we? <laughs> we have we have the full time job, which is in the hospitality industry, which means you are working with the public. Very difficult. Yes. Then we have the side hustle, which is you beginning to monetize your blog because you're doing the parallelpreneur thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we have wife because we all know how they demand their individual time. And then we have mom. So essentially, you really have four jobs, three full times and a part time. Yes. Yep. And, and I did that for about four years. Now, was there were there any particular tools? Like you mentioned earlier that you would compartmentalize your time. When you get home, when the kids get home, three thirty, between three thirty and eight thirty, mom is there for them full time. Now, back when you were working all four at one time, were there any particular tools that you had or did something happen during that time to give you that revelation to say, okay, I need to put some hard lines down because I can't do everything at the same time? Yeah, I got sick. I got burnt out. I found myself getting sick on a regular basis. I was getting terrible migraines. And part of it, of course, was I was not getting enough sleep. And I was stressed. So those two things alone, you know, I, they, they impact so much in our world. So I had to really just step back and look at like, okay, this is what you want to do. You have to make it work, but you have to take care of yourself as, as well. And I'm very, very big on self-care. You know, even to the woman that has five part-time jobs, you know, juggling, wife, being a wife, mother, all of that stuff, you have to step back and take care of yourself. Because at the end of the day, when I didn't take care of myself, I got sick. And guess what? When I got sick, everything fell apart. Right. Because then my husband looking like, look, who's, who's going to take care of me? Um, my girlfriends and I, we all, all were at a period where we all kind of started having, like, I, my daughter, like I said, she was, she was a surprise. <laughs> but, you know, I was, I had already had my children. But they started having their first kids around the time that I had my daughter. So they realized what I was going through for mm -hmm. six or seven mm -hmm. years. So they started really pushing to, you know, needing that time away and having time for themselves. So we started uh, once a quarter, we would go away for a weekend. We wow. make once a quarter. There's five of us. We're all, we're all mothers. Um, we're all in relationships, everyone, but once a quarter, and we planned it out. Like at the beginning of the year, there's one friend. You always have that, you need that one friend that's a planner. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but at the beginning of the year, she sends out an email. She says, okay, give me your, you know, what are your months that won't work, you know, whatever. And we schedule our time that we're going to go away four times a year. Uh, with each other and you know there are times when not everybody's going to be able to make it but for the most part we're we're making that time away and we don't it's not like bad moms club or girls going wild uh we may just go down the street to myrtle beach get a beach house and we could all be in a mm -hmm. separate room reading a book sleeping somebody might get up and go to the beach somebody might just be watching television but we're just there's no there's nothing mommy he's hitting me can i have a juice box Where's my How did you transition? Because everybody knows what it was. There a magic number as far as a dollar amount for you to say, okay, now I can let the full time go and I can monetize this blog on a full time basis to replace. Was there a magic my, number for you or? My goal was 75% of my take home income from my old job. Okay. And the reason I did 75% was because, um, you know, when I, once I came home, there were so many things that I was going to be saving money on anyways. Uh, gas, because I wasn't driving around lunch, because uh, it was a very, like the last year or so, yeah. was extremely, extremely stressful. So even when we said we weren't going to go to lunch, some 
y'all, we got to get out of here. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. We, you know, because again, when you're dealing with a stressful environment, mm-hmm. you just we ate, so we go. We were going to lunch every day. We didn't care because we were like, look, they owe it to us. <laughs> and, um, my goal was 75% of my income, and while I was working up to that, I anything I earned from my um, side businesses, I put into savings so that I could have a savings when I transitioned. So when I did make the transition, I was bringing in consistently 75% of my take home pay and I had already saved up a year's worth of my salary. Wow. That's discipline. It was. That, I had to a lot of stuff. That is discipline. But I had a, a end goal and that's the, you know, I talk a lot about short-term sacrifices for a long time. So you transition your home full-time, your your blog is monetized. Um, did the t-shirt come immediately or was that a part of the monetization of the blog? How did that get worked in? The t-shirts came about a year. I launched my t-shirt line in 2014. So I was already building up my t-shirt business as I was um, working on my transition out of my full-time job. So the t-shirt business really was a game changer for me. It really was because now this is something that is totally mine. Um, I'm not dependent on you know uh, affiliate income. I'm not dependent on a sponsored post or anything like this. This is a product that identifies who I am and I can go out there and market it. So when I'm going out there talking about what I do, if I'm uh, working with other women, this is a product that is me, it's mine. And even now in uh, in my town, you know, when people see that diva shirt, they know. Because if, oh yeah, I saw somebody, and we don't even know, like there's, and I love the excitement of my community and my tribe because they get more excited than I do sometimes when they see, you know, my product. So run me down now through your products and services and everything that you are offering because I it is a lot. <laughs> it's funny because I'm one of those diva is working that business, honey. <laughs> add extra stuff onto what I do. So sometimes, like I'll just like I'll do things because someone like, oh, can you help me with this? Well, you know what? That might be something that I want to do one day. So sure, let's see how this works out. Like I just helped someone do a book launch and, you know, we went from her book being just on paper uh, to an actual physical book in her hand, putting it on Amazon and having the actual event. I was like, oh, I like this because I, you know, I do collaborative books. So this is something that I can now do for myself, Mm -hmm. but I also have a really good friend who is is an editor. So uh, essentially when her people are finished working with her, they now come over to me and I help them get their finished book from, you know, help them self-publish their book to where they can have an ebook. And these are people that, you know, those of us that are in social media, we get it. You know, we understand getting on Amazon and social media push, but there are so many people that are just, they just get on Facebook. They really get on Facebook just to be on Facebook. Sometimes I'm very envious about that. (laughs) But, you know, they're just on there to be on there. So I help them you know, utilize social media to help promote their products and services. So that is one thing that I do is I teach the everyday person how to utilize social media to benefit their small business or their product. I still have my blog, Leave This With A Purpose. This is actually where, uh, I guess we're celebrating seven months, seven years. Wow, yay! (laughs) Where it all started, like. So you, you, you still have the passive income coming in from the blog. Yeah. Well, I thought, okay, I thought one, the t-shirt business replaced. Mm, 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 mm. No, no, all of that. So I have my passive income still coming in from my blog. Okay. Um, and I still do, you know, I do campaigns and I work with different brands and stuff to, to, to do uh, sponsored posts and articles and series on my blog. So that's still an income that's coming in. I have my t-shirt business uh, and I'm actually expanding my t-shirt business to have uh, a different design. We are going to be introducing a shirt for the little divas in our lives uh, oh. in the fall. Um, and then I've had a couple of people ask for some shirts for men to say, like, I, yeah. I love Steve or something like this. So I'm excited about that. I had someone working on a design for that. So really expanding the, the T-shirt collection. Um, and then with the T-shirt collection, because so many people wanted to do it but just didn't know how to do it or mm-hmm. what to do it, I teach that. So I teach people how to create their own, how to launch their own T-shirt business. 
And then there's some people that want to know how to do it, but can't do it or just don't want to do it. Like they want to know the schematics, but they're like, look, I don't have time for that. So I actually do, do offer um, the service of actually being the person that will take care of that for you. So I, I will get your t-shirts ordered for you, package them up, send them out on your behalf. Um, I have about three clients that I'm working with for that. Now I'm going to tap that off because that is very, that can be very time consuming. Yes. Very, I'm very conscious about how much time I am, you know, giving to, to, to each area of my life because I want to make sure that I still have time to, of course, focus on what I'm doing, um, but also. My kids, like, we have like little assembly lines that are set up. So when it's shipping day, you know, we have, it's time to. <laughs> going to start packaging this and they know like my oldest he knows how to uh fold them my daughter she's the one now she just she seals all the envelopes and everything so we it's a family business like and they get paid i do they get a salary that is part of how they earn their own income because i'm big about teaching children financial literacy so they have to budget their money they have their money if you want something okay how much money do you have (laughs) so um so i have the t-shirt business and then I, uh, what else do I do? See, I do so many things. Sometimes I have to ask myself. Mm-hmm. And then I do. Uh, I'm a community manager for a um, for a group, and I teach other community managers. So I kind of help other people and people that have communities, online communities. So if you have a blog group or any type of group, yeah. a women's group, any type of large community on Facebook, a group. Um, sometimes it's great to outsource that. So I help them to find ways to outsource it so that they don't feel as though they have to be online all the time. So, so what, what, what about starting a group from zero? I, I do that as well because I've, I've done that mm-hmm. numerous times. So mm-hmm. I can I can help someone start their group from zero, ways to get people in the group, you know, um, promote your group, how to make sure people stay engaged within that group, uh, and then when to know when it's time for you to bring somebody on and how to find the right person for your group and then just keeping it going and keep and just keeping it going so that you have engaged members but you're also able to promote because a lot of most most of the like i said most of the people that are entrepreneurs so typically if they have this type of group they are promoting a product or service of theirs but it's a way there's a way to do it without just always saying buy this buy that get this get that you know, you have to provide that service and that buy-in and create that community feel and be genuine. I downloaded and went through your um, t-shirt course and it taught me a lot about the back end of the business and things that I needed to consider beforehand for like, for instance, fulfillment. And whether or not I'm going to have a floor full of t-shirts or is it, <laughs> or am I going to share the profits by having an, an online company like Spreadshirt or, or Zazzle or somebody like that handle it. Um, the different types of the thickness of the cotton in the t-shirts and what you're choosing. Not to start with four or five different designs because then you, you you have to have not just the four or five different designs, but then you need that in, in all those different sizes. So it, it taught me a lot about what to learn and consider on the front end. Then it also gave me the idea that as I went to different conferences and just traveling around here in my own city in D.C., I had a T-shirt made with my business name on it and a couple of different mission statements to see what people interacted with the most and what they liked as far as what the mission statement said. So it's helped me a great deal in setting out my foundation and and getting a direction going for not just t-shirts but my business in general so i wanted to thank you for that thank you i appreciate that you are 100 percent at home successful entrepreneur you have completely replaced your full-time income kids are happy hubby's happy mom's happy everything right now is just rolling everything is rolling so what's next for Michelle? That is a very good question. I think continuing to, continuing to build on what I have. Mm-hmm. Um, I love connecting with women face to face. So branching out into that education outside. So um, I've thought about doing some courses and 
teachings just within my community because I'm really big on giving back to my community. So I've had the opportunity to connect with some phenomenal women here in Columbia. And the thing is, there are so many female entrepreneurs that are just doing it here. And I'm excited to be able to connect with them and learn from them. So just kind of taking that, those connections to the next level so that we can kind of build a support system for female entrepreneurs face to face within our local community. That'll be kind of my way of giving back to my local community while still growing my online community as well. Okay, so Garrett University. <laughs> A big thing that I tell people is don't, don't feel as though you have to keep all your knowledge in. Like that's one thing I think another thing that I think has been a part of my success is I don't have a problem sharing with people. I don't have a problem giving information away um, and just in general conversation because once I've given that to them and they see my genuine passion for it, if they really need my services or my products, they're going to come back and they're going to find me. You know, I typically will leave my card and say, well, here, you know, I do do this professionally. Here's my information. Or feel free just to email me if you have a quick question. And I do that. And people remember that. And it's helped me to get lots of referral services as well because they're like, oh, yeah, I talked to her and she helped me with X, Y, Z just, sitting on, you know, while we're sitting at the restaurant. Okay, let's put you in the hot seat. No water. <laughs> just got a couple of questions I'm going to fire at you back to back and let's see where Michelle is with hip culture today okay okay Beyonce or Rihanna Beyonce Don Lemon or Roland Martin Roland Martin Maxwell or Denzel ooh Denzel when this <laughs> <laughs> ebook or print book? Print book. Toughest thing about being an entrepreneur? <sighs> not, not giving up. Not giving up and just saying I'm going to go back to the working world where I know I will get this check every two weeks, and it's it's just going to happen. Um, I think that's. Uh, that really is the toughest.